Would Fusion be one of those ideas that you'd go to? Man, I should have put in all my charts about Fusion because I used to, I used to be so into Fusion, especially Helium-3 Fusion, Mining the Moon. Oh my gosh, I read so many books about that stuff. And talk, I've even talked to Harrison Schmidt, the astronaut. And I took this Fusion class when I was at Georgia Tech. And I'll never forget it because I went into that class going, man, Fusion's awesome. It's the answer, blah, 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 blah. And we started studying, I go, man, this is really hard. And the basic reason fusion is hard is because charged particles don't want to get near each other, okay? Bare nuclei are both charged, positive charged, they want to avoid each other. And my professor had this really great way of putting it. He said, it's like playing mini golf. There's this thing in fusion called the Lawson criterion. There's three things that a fusion reactor has to have, density, confinement, and temperature. And he had this great analogy where he says, it's like going to the mini golf. He says, you know how the mini golf, you got the volcano, right? And the volcano's got the hole at the very top. And you've got to put your ball in a way that it goes all the way up the side of the volcano and whoop, falls in the hole. He goes, okay, that's like fusion, all right? The ball is like a nucleus and the volcano is the scattering effect. So anytime you want to have a nucleus go to another nucleus, it scatters. It rolls up the mountain and it rolls down the side or it rolls up here and rolls down. And only when you just perfectly get it on the right angle does it go in the, does it go in the volcano. Now the problem with fusion, he goes, now you can't putt your ball, you can't steer the ball, and you have to have it, you have to have enough temperature so that it can make it all the way up the side of the volcano and fall in, and then you have to have enough balls, because you can't steer them, that they're there at the mini golf park, that's density, and then because they're flying all over the place, you've got to make sure there's a fence around the mini golf park so they don't get away, that's confinement. So he says, those are your three things, density, temperature, and confinement to make fusion happen. I said, dude, that's really hard. So I came up with another analogy. I said, so I guess fission would be like the mini golf park, except now the volcano was flush with the ground. The hole is about this big around. The balls are going slow, and every time the ball goes in the hole, two more balls come out. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> Here's what fusion is like. Fusion is so hard that we can build a fusion reactor, and we can have 100 PhDs working on it, and they still have no idea what's going on. He goes, fission is so easy that we can take a couple of kids out of high school, train them for a few months, and they can be running a nuclear submarine. I said, yeah, you're right. That is really hard. And this guy had spent his whole career in fusion. And I said, well, I don't think we're ever going to get there. He goes, that's OK. It's great science. We make, we make a lot of PhDs off doing fusion. And I was like, oh, man. you know." So, so my, my hope for fusion is not particularly high. You know, I, I, I'd love to be wrong, but I sure ain't seen it yet. And I've looked at Focus Fusion, I've looked at that Steam Piston Fusion, and I've looked at D Helium 3 and P Boron and all these other kind of things, and I'm still going, I'm just not buying it yet, you know? But maybe I'm wrong. You're saying the business case isn't there. That's what you're saying. It's just so darn hard. I mean, a fusion reactor is a big vacuum tube at 10 keV, which is like 15 trillion degrees. And then inside this is, is superconducting magnets that are held in liquid helium. All of this is jacketed in a lithium blanket that will breed megacuries of tritium, you know, which will then be injected into this reactor, which is driven by these giant neutral ion beams. I mean, it's like, oh my gosh, can we make this thing any more complicated than it is? And even then you can't hold the confinement for more than a few microseconds in the tokamak configuration, which is the most favored and, and desired. So. Oh, guys, I got to sit down pretty soon. I <laughs> just about to. I got. But what's your question? The, the, the people in the Italy who did a thirty to one confusion. Uh, sorry, not confusion, but con conversion fusion reactor. You feed it four hundred watts in, you get twelve thousand four hundred watts out. Uh huh. What What about that? I haven't heard about that. Okay, that would be Nobel Prize material. That would be it was front all page over page. the YouTube. So okay. It's not, all of the not all of the YouTube's YouTube. all over. That's all over Nature, Science, and every physics journal out there. Well, it's, yeah. Okay. yeah, it's four hundred watts in, twelve thousand four hundred watts out. Cool. Cool. Let's see. That's that. Yeah. Those. If that. If that works, those guys will win the Nobel. Yeah. Unfortunately, we have bad experiences with quacks like Pons and Fleischmann it's some, and all kinds of other. at a university. Like they seem pretty. Like they got. Well, Pons and Fleischmann were at a university too. They were at University yeah, of Utah. Well, I remember yeah, that one. Yeah. I mean, I'd say this. Hey, lifter, you don't put any watts in, and you get as many <laughs> watts as you want. Huh? I like lifter a lot. Yeah, don't get me wrong. Vision's pretty dang awesome. I mean, I. Mean, yeah, it's simple. Yeah, it's very easy in comparison. All right. Well, hey, thank you all so much. Had a great time.